Hello and welcome to the Raptors Reaction Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, William Liu. Uh, I'm speaking to you after the Raptors lost a highly contested, very thrilling finish of a 108-106 loss to the Denver Nuggets. Um, before I go on, I don't know if anyone else heard the early, the first one that I did after the Warriors game, but um, to those who are uninitiated, um, I'm going to be tr- doing a post-game reaction podcast at the at the end of each Raptors game of the season, preseason, regular season, playoffs. Um, you know, it, the, I'm still working out the format. I'm going to try a couple things uh, in today's show, but yep, that's that's essentially it. You, know, you can check the the Raptors Republic. Uh, uh, podcast feed for for these reaction pods. So yeah, so for for tonight's game, um, first and foremost, uh, you know, shout out to Calgary for uh, just putting on a really great game in terms of the crowd. The crowd was really really into it. Uh, it made for a really fun atmosphere for an otherwise just run of the mill preseason game. Um, you know, the fans were really up. Uh, Really excited uh, right down to the final buzzer uh, when Norman Powell had a chance to win the game for the Raptors on a turnaround three that was heavily contested and it sort of clanked out. Um, that nearly completed a really thrilling comeback for the Raptors, actually. But, yeah, just a really fun game. It was nice to see Calgary uh, uh, you know, represent like that. I r- really had no idea the Raptors had reached like that in, in, out west in the prairies. So that was encouraging to see. It really hammers in the, uh, the Weedon North sort of a campaign that the uh, Raptors organization has been pushing basically for the last three years. Um, say so on to the game itself, I mean, just general thoughts on the game. Like, you know, you're not seeing a lot of creativity out of the Raptors offensively. In fact, you look at what the Raptors are running and what the, the, the Nuggets are running, it's just night and day. The Nuggets are running all these pin downs, you know, big to big, high-low action, all sorts of sp- all sorts of creative plays, and the Raptors are just running, you know, typical Raptors stuff, just high pick and roll, stuff like that. It's clear that the Raptors are working on other things during camp, um, not focusing a lot on the offensive side, which is which is fine because they, they still produce, you know, a nice out, uh, a nice night, 106 points, um, you know, is is a pretty decent output. But yeah, just a just a regular run of the mill, um, uh, yeah, r- regular run of the mill game. Um, two starters. And Jared Salinger and Demari Carroll sat out. Uh, just general rest stuff. I mean, Carroll's got—he's still coming back from the knee thing, uh, and I think Salinger had like a a foot, a sore foot or something. Like either way, like if it were a regular season game, they would have both played. But it's preseason; they're on the road. Giving the night off is fine. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try to hand out three three starts of the game and see if this is something that people uh, you know like as a format for the podcast. Uh, again, like these are this is the second one I'm doing, so uh, you know feel free to uh, let me know what you what your thoughts are on the podcast and, and what kind of segments I, uh, that work or or don't work and what what kinds of uh, uh, you know topics or breakdowns that I should go into. So. Let's go with the generic three stars. Number one star has to go to Terrence Ross, who threw two preseason games, mind you, but it, it, it's very clear that he's got a different mindset when he comes into the game. Very, very aggressive when he enters the game. In fact, the first touch of the game uh, tonight when Ross came off the bench around the three-minute mark of the first quarter, came off a screen, uh, got a little bit of separation from his defender, first touch, put it up. You know, It was a made three swish. End of the night with 23 points in 20 minutes on 8 of 12 shooting from the field. Um, it's just a really impressive night from Ross. Again, like I mentioned this in the Warriors game, you saw a lot of really impressive plays coming out of Ross. Uh, I, I, I captured one on Twitter and I, that I put out on Twitter where Ross uh, in the Warriors game got JaVale McGee on a switch, crossed him up, went baseline, and then went reverse, used a hoop to a shield. Against a shot contestant, these are just things that you just don't normally see from Ross, and you haven't seen from Ross consistently. Um, that continued on to into this game, where you know we saw Ross come off screens as he usually does, but also we saw Ross attack off the uh, off a high screen, uh, got himself a couple of open jumpers that way. Um, just and you know this is a game where he was really hot and he was shooting a lot and very aggressive and looking for a shot. But that's exactly what you want out of Ross when he comes off the bench. You know, at a certain point, he got so hot in the second quarter, he made like three shots in a row, 
the Nuggets started guarding him really close, and they were starting to foul him. And, and this is talk, we're talking about Terrence Ross here, who doesn't really draw a lot of fouls. It's just great because it looks like now with Ross shedding a little bit of weight, he definitely does look a lot quicker. Um, and that sort of herky jerky motion is really uh, paired, paired with the fact that he can shoot really well at any mo- at any time's notice. That herky jerky motion has really allowed him to, you know occasionally attack the paint which is obviously not his strength but if he can get into the paint it's a pretty nice uh, mid-range shooter which I actually don't mind Ross taking that mid-range shot he's really really good at it um, but also I mean, a couple times today he was able to drive into the paint collapse the defense a little bit and play a little bit of two-man game with, with Jonas Valanciunas did that twice in the third quarter both got, got Jonas two wide open jumpers that Jonas hit no problem just, just a really encouraging performance of Terrence Ross, and you know, hopefully he takes, he bottles this mentality, and he continues it on to the season because this is exactly what the Raptors need out of him, coming off the bench like this. You know, obviously he's not going to be eight of twelve every game, but just the fact that he's w- willing to come into the game and affect the game uh, is a significant change from you know last season and just even pre- previous seasons. Because one of the biggest knocks on Ross has always been that he kind of drifts in and out of games. And that's not what you want to have in a, in a bench player, um, especially the go-to bench scorer. But, you know, if Ross continues to shoot like this and attack the basket like this, that's going to be a very nice year for Ross coming up. Uh, second star, I just mentioned him, Jonas. Uh, I thought Jonas struggled a lot in the Warriors game. He just didn't look good, not mobile. And a lot of that lethargy kind of continued on to in, into this game against the Nuggets. But, you know, he actually recovered quite nicely. Uh, to finish with 20 points, 9 rebounds, including 88 from, eight from, eight from the free throw line. Um, you know, the weird thing with Jonas is, especially when you see him matched up with a guy like, uh, you know, Nikola Jokic, who's a much more fluid, much more sort of a modern quote-unquote center. Jonas is really old school, and he's, he's, like, a, he's like a battering ram, really. And, he, you know, he's not getting a lot of lift. He's not, he's not making a lot of decisive plays, but he's just really effective as a basketball player like in, in the in the first quarter I thought he struggled a lot just you know defensively moving around is not not a lot of activity out of, out of Jonas but you know I looked up at like you know the if the eight minute mark of the first quarter and, and all of a sudden or not, you know eight minutes into the first quarter not the eight minute mark and Jonas had drawn four fouls on the defense and, and another nice pass where he was uh, operating the low post and found a cutter I think it was Drew Crawford uh, who had beat the Denver defense, and he got another foul there too. So that's five fouls right there that created by Jonas that puts the Raptors in the bonus. And these are small, subtle things that you know Jonas's power game can really uh, seek to accomplish. So, you know, I thought I thought it was a kind of a brutish effort in the first half. Second half, he came in a little bit more energy, a little bit more fire. Definitely a lot more decisive on offense. Made a lot of quick moves. Uh, those two jumpers that I said from from set up from Terrence Ross, those are really nice. Just, just uh, actually had a nice uh, little turnaround 10-foot uh, shot in the post against uh, you know, Yusuf Nurkic. So just a really compelling game from Jonas overall. And it's nice to have him, see him have a strong game because the Raptors do need a lot of, from him this season with not a lot of backup at center. Uh, just, just yet another, well, I wouldn't say a bad game from Jakob Pertl because he actually had a, nice, a couple of nice putbacks just following up drives and stuff. But... Uh, it's pretty clear that neither Pertl, Siakam, or Bebe can be a consistent contributor night in, night out. And so the Raptors do need Jonas to be that guy. So hopefully, again, Jonas can continue this kind of mindset and also increase his fitness because he doesn't quite look like he's completely fit yet. But yet, you know, he remains effective. Um, and in terms of the third star, Fred Van Liet uh, is a name that I should get used to saying because I feel like he's he continues to have the inside edge on the 15th spot uh, especially given the way he plays just uh, just again a very steady point guard uh, you know plays within himself but kind of exactly what the Raptors want usually out of their guards which is to have combo skills be able to play on and off the ball he seems to be able to do that runs the, runs the offense pretty well he had three really really nice setups to Jakob Pertl in the, in, the, in the fourth quarter Pertl squandered one of them but two other ones he finished off just just a really solid, compact player. You know, it can attack the basket too. Is not great around the basket because he's so small. Because he's like smaller than Kyle Lowry, and definitely has shorter arms. But you know, the fact that he's willing to attack the basket, find little gaps and seams, 
it's just it's just a nice little output for him. Uh, today he finished with eight points, three of four shooting, uh, hit both his free throws, three assists, uh, only one turnover in 12 minutes. That's that's pretty nice, steady play from your uh, from your third guard, and um, especially you know with the Raptors needing a third point guard with the line right injured, Fred Van Leeds looked pretty solid and continues to um, you know look appear as if he's the early favorite for. You know, the 15th spot. And, you know, I'm thinking, like, today, for example, the Cavaliers just signed Tony Douglas, who, you know, eh, is this guy who's played seven seven teams in, in six years, uh, on seven teams in six years. Like, you know, I'm sure the Cavaliers would like to grab a guy like Fred Van Bleet, who's obviously a rookie, but a pretty, um, uh, I would say a pretty experienced rookie, especially since he played four years in college. Um, so, you know, if the Raptors don't manage to retain, or if the Raptors don't decide to hold on to Van Bleet, you know, we, you know, they might lose him because he's, he's actually played really, really well, um, throughout the preseason so far. Uh, a couple other notes to touch on, uh, Bruno, Bruno started, uh, at small four with Demar Carroll, um, out with injury or just for rest, sorry. And, uh, you know, Bruno didn't do anything. Uh, in terms of offense, he literally just stood there and wasn't involved in any play, just sort of stood in the corner, didn't really make any moves, hardly shifted from his position. But I thought in 15 minutes, he actually fared quite well on defense. He was matched up a lot on Delino Gallinari, who was a really tricky cover with his inside-out scoring. Um, but, you know, Bruno, I thought he fared well. He blocked he, he blocked Gallo a couple times, smothered him into a nice miss. Um, you know, just... Just, I guess, I don't know. I, with Bruno, so much of it is theoretical, and it's so much of it is just looking at his physical profile and hoping that he could be something. But, you know, it, it's nice to see that sort of physical profile and, and, and potential translate into some kind of marginal production, uh, uh, even though it's it's been two years. But, you know, we're still taking a long approach, apparently, with, with, with Bruno. And, yeah, uh, at least in games like this, where he's able to use his length to, 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 to against a smaller guy in Gallinari, who isn't even small to begin with. He's a pretty big small forward as it is. Just to see Bruno physically impose himself and use that physical advantage on defense, it, it kind of reaffirms like a little bit as to why he's on the team in the first place. So hopefully he gets more strong. He puts in more strong efforts, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, someone in the comments, I forgot who it was, suggested I should do a Gerald Henderson award, which is, uh, should be awarded to the, the player on the opposing team that inexplicably lights up the Raptors, who is quite often Gerald Henderson. Um, and in this game, I thought, uh, the Canadian boy, Jamal Murray, had a really, really nice game, especially a nice impact off the bench. Uh, Murray is Canadian, and, uh, you know, I thought he would actually get the start, usually, uh, especially early in preseason, you know, coaches like to give their players a bit of face, uh, especially when they're in their home country and stuff. And this is, you know, Murray making his professional debut in Canada. Uh, he only played 17 minutes, but he played most of the, the fourth quarter and really looked strong as their lead guard, had nine points on three of five shooting, uh, you know, went to the line four times. Just, you know, Murray's, he's good, man. He's, he's Smart, smart, heady shooter had a nice couple of drives, uh, along with Malik Beasley and Juancho Hernan Gomez, who are all players apparently in the NBA. Um, the three of them really put a number or put a hurting on the Raptors, uh, and they carried the Nuggets in, in to victory in the fourth quarter. So, you know, it was just nice to to, to see Jamal Murray get a good, nice moment in Calgary when he entered the game. You know, Canadian fans in attendance, you know, they knew what was up. Uh, gave him a nice little ovation, and every time he came into the game, they cheered him. Uh, save for, I think, Murray towed the line towards the end of the game for two free throws. They started booing him then, but other than that, there's a lot of love from the Canadian crowd, and that's just a cool moment for the uh, Canadian kid to have. Um, you know, I wish I wish Murray had dropped all the way down to the Raptors at nine, but you know, the Nuggets got themselves uh, yet another shooting guard that uh, has a lot of potential. So. Yeah, all the best to Jamal Murray, man. That guy's an electric player. Uh, okay, just a couple of closing notes to, uh, to to end this podcast with. I'm coming up on 15 minutes, which is usually how much I would aim to have these podcasts be within. Um, yeah, okay, so quick thing on Jakob Pertl. 
I thought he had a better game, like I said earlier, but he's still kind of soft around the basket a couple times. I felt like he should have finished a couple more plays. Um, just a little bit shy of contact. I, I'm not quite sure why that is, uh, but he definitely needs to shore that up if he's going to be more effective going forward. Um, Patrick Patterson looked like he had a slightly changed three-point shot, uh, or maybe I'm just seeing things, but it looks like he's taking a much smaller hop than he normally does, and he's firing it uh, a little bit quicker without so much of that slingshot action. And you know, if he's able to get that release off quicker, that means he has more opportunities to to play pick and pop going forward. Um, so that's a nice little development, so long as he can continue shooting accurately. Uh, Baby Negreira had a couple nice moments. Some good used his length pretty well to just affect defensive plays. But uh, I mean, again, like Baby, just you just have to be consistent, man. You have all the physical tools. Uh, you have all the opportunity in the world right now with the backup center being wide open. You need to seize that opportunity uh, with more op- with with just con- sustained, consistent effort and focus on, on defense, and just start from there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, lastly, Pascal Siakam. Just a bit of a rough night for him. It's just it's just as energetic as, as he was in the Warriors game, but not not nearly as effective. 0 for 6 from the field um, in 22 minutes, ended up scoreless. Got five rebounds, three on offensive end. Uh, with Siakam, it just feels like he's kind of rushing a lot of everything. You know, he's really definitely really excited when he comes into games. And I thought actually after playing 22 minutes, he looked noticeably gassed, which just is a testament to to how hard he's playing. But you know, sometimes he needs to learn. Sort of the cadence of the NBA game. When is it, when is the time for subtlety? When is the time for going in quick? When's the time for going in strong? And uh, you know that's something obviously all rookies will have to eventually pick up. So I'm not too worried. I'm very encouraged that he continued to uh, bring a lot of effort, uh, especially hustle and energy. Which again, Bruno or Bebe could really use that. Uh, but you know right now Siakam is continues to be that guy. He just wasn't that effective tonight. So. All right, that does it for the, uh, the the reaction podcast. Let me know what you think, uh, what you think I should do with the podcast. Uh, give me any feedback you can. Either hit me up on Twitter at William underscore Lou, or you know, drop a comment in the Raptors Public page. Uh, and, and yeah, thank you guys for listening, and I'll be back after the uh, Clippers game on Wednesday. Clippers game on Wednesday.